Today we are here at the Fama Gallery in uh, Brampton downtown, Toronto, uh, where an exhibit commemorating the 550th birth anniversary of Guru Nanak uh, is being uh, is on show. This show is on till January and has been curated by the fabulous, uh, fabulously by Lali Marwaha, who has really put together a very strong narrative uh, of Guru Nanak and his legacy uh, for the Sikhs. The show is titled uh, the Sakis of Guru Nanak, uh, the life and legacy of the founder of the Sikh faith. And it starts with the narration of the Janam Sakhi tradition, uh, which is in the Sikh faith, uh, which includes a number of uh, information on Guru Nanak uh, from the Janam Sakhis, compiled many, many decades after his passing. So this is an important point that there is no contemporary painting done of the Guru during his lifetime. And all the information or the visual memory that we have of Guru Nanak is from uh, starting from the Janam Sakis onto our contemporary renditions, which are all as per the perception and the imagination of the artist of that, of that period. Uh, here in it, it depicts the early life of Guru Nanak through some of the Janam Sakhi paintings. And one of the important is, is here uh, is this painting which is a watercolor on paper from a Janam Sakhi from the early 19th century uh, which shows the disappearance of Baba Nanak uh, when he goes to take his bath in the river Bain and disappears which is known as the emergence and the immersion uh, from where on uh, it's so-called construed with the enlightenment uh, of Guru Nanak as in the western tradition. Uh, after this seminal incident uh, Guru Nanak um, starts to starts his travels, uh, which he does for 25 years, covering over 25,000 miles in all four directions, uh, including up to down to Sri Lanka, uh, the Udasis to uh, Mansarovar in Tibet, uh, to the Middle East, um, and in uh, Pakistan, etc. Flowing from the first section of the exhibit, which is the early life, we now have move into the journeys. Uh, undertaken by Guru Nanak. And, but before we do that, I must uh, point out to this wonderful sound cloud that I'm standing under, which has renderings of uh, Gurbani by the talented vocal artist uh, Ramni Kaur from Toronto. Amardeep uh, has taken these photographs during the making of his two books, and he's currently on his project of filming the travels of Guru Nanak, so we can look forward to much more uh, in-depth uh, work from him. And uh, these are pictures of uh, Nankana Sab, where the Baba Nanak was born. And this particular piece is, is very interesting. And he's taken this photograph behind uh, this grilled uh, window, uh, which is symbolically saying that the, the limited access that Sikhs have to their places of worship in some parts of the world. And I find that very poignant and uh, interesting from a creative angle as well. So there are about uh, five of these uh, photographs uh, which show different places. Then uh, the exhibit is, is then divided into a uh, segment which is a succession from where Guru Nanak's legacy is, is uh, transferred to the succession of the 10 Gurus as they happen in, in, uh, in, in, in Sikh tradition. And uh, they have, there are some beautiful uh, miniature paintings uh, which show all the ten gurus uh, in one in, in one painting, uh, which is from um, this particular piece is also a very unique and rare piece, and I haven't seen one like this ever before, which is an uh, it, which is a print on an embossed paper made with paper mache uh, in the early twentieth century and uh, which shows the baptism of the, of the, of the Khalsa. And very interestingly, uh, what caught my eye was the, was the name of the collection here, the Fangui family collection. And uh, I was uh, fortunate enough to meet uh, the collector uh, at the opening of this exhibit. And he explained to me uh, why they have chosen this name is because this was the village in Burma from where his family had immigrated and in honor of their roots, uh, the naming of the collection uh, was done, which I, uh, I find that so emotional 
keeping that link with your roots and heritage alive for yours, yourself as well as your future generations. There are some more beautiful pieces from the Tangri collection as well. And then it flows, uh, also the exhibit includes a number of contemporary pieces. This is a print uh, by the famous uh, Indian artist Kamal Hussain, which shows Guru Gobind Singh and it is. The fourth segment of this beautiful exhibit is the conclave of the Sikh Gurus. And one of the paintings in, in this section uh, is this beautiful uh, uh, watercolor on paper from 1830s, which is also from the Tangui family collection, which depicts all the 10 gurus, as well as includes uh, the two sons of uh, Guru Nanak, Baba Shri Chand and uh, Baba Lakmi Das. And also um, there is by Mardana uh, shown in this uh, painting. And interestingly, what really caught my eye was most of the uh, paintings of, from this period or in this uh, style show Guru Nanak wearing a silly topi, um, topi as, as on his head. But this particular one uh, shows uh, Baba Nanak wearing a turban, uh, which I found very interesting and unusual from this period. Here is an interesting piece which you don't very often see, which is a rumala, uh, which is uh, made um, uh, in China and it was embroidered on silk, uh, done in the late 19th century. Most probably when, when uh, Sikh soldiers were, were, play, were in China, they commissioned this piece. And very interestingly, again, like we talked right at the beginning, that it is really the perception of the artist of how they visualize the gurus. So here in this, uh, in this piece, all the gurus are shown with very Chinese facial characters uh, and Guru Nanak is, is more in their image of how they would um, uh, imagine their emperor and, and the other and so on is with, uh, with all others, uh, other gurus. And again, in, as per the traditional style, there is the centrally placed uh, Kra Prashad, but at the same time, there is also another object which I believe is, uh, is associated with some sanctity in the Chinese traditions. And we also have the, uh, the common bird in the, the, bird in the cage uh, in, in, in wherever Guru Nanak is represented with, uh, with uh, uh, Pai Mardana. The final se uh, segment of this uh, fabulous exhibit is talks about the succession from the 10 Gurus to now the Shri Guru Granth Sahib as the eternal guru for the Sikhs. Uh, and it has some contemporary works. Uh, here is one by Harinder Singh, uh, which is the um, writing of the Moon Mantra on handmade paper. As well as uh, this uh, lithograph, which is uh, by M.S. Hussain, which shows uh, the, the Guru Granth Sahib in the central uh, Sikh traditions. One of the most important elements or uh, artworks in this exhibit, uh, which, I, which I find, is uh, the display of this uh, rare 1777 uh, Janam Sakhi. Now, the earliest Janam Sakhis were, were in the, uh, were, were dated to 1600s, late 1600s. And this particular one is, is also closed in 1777. And it has paintings or illustrations in situ to, uh, in the book itself and not as separately. And here we also have along with uh, the original artworks in these cases, there are other um, uh, translations or publications of during that time. Very interestingly, uh, along with, uh, here's a, another Rumala, uh, which is in the same embroidery tradition. Moving on to, moving on to this uh, perforated paper, mid 19th century, which is actually how the Janam Sakis or the paintings were created. These are the master, uh, the master drafts which the artists made and then people would, uh, the other uh, artists would take this master draft and trace it out, uh, trace it out with charcoal rubbing over the perforations and they would get um, 
a template, uh, which was, this is used as a template for, uh, for other paintings. These are some more Janam Sakis. Uh, this one is a Kashmiri manuscript, which was uh, made in, in Kashmir by Kashmiri artists. And so the, again, the features are uh, appropriate to the region. It, in, it has its original binding, which is also rare because being the fragile nature of these artworks uh, on paper and that we have these. Uh, this one will give you a sense of, uh, of the size of the, of the Janamsaki, which is undated here in this. And we also have in these drawers uh, the French translation of the Guru Granth Sahib, which was done by Dr. Jarnail Singh in 1996. The, the exhibit also includes some beautiful artworks uh, on the Golden Temple, on the Darbar Sahib, or the Hari Mandir Sahib. Uh, here is one rare, very rare, to see a watercolor and oil on cloth uh, with, with gold, uh, which is uh, an architectural rendering of the Hari Mandir Sahib. Flying above is the Nishan Sahib in a triangular Sikh pennant. But uh, you will also notice that the Nishan Sab is not what we usually have in contemporary times. Uh, it's, um, it's in a different style. So it just makes us think of uh, the evolution of how everything is an evolution and process. They're not frozen in time. It is said that the Nishan Sab was first hoisted over the Akalta in 1606, as an, uh, which is... Um, which is the Sikh temporal authority. Here is another fabulous, spectacular watercolor uh, on paper, which is by the famous uh, Sikh artist Sardar Thakur Singh from the earliest 20th century. And very interestingly, one can see the various architectural structures, the bungas which, which surrounded the, the Barsa, uh, 